This video is going to talk about the coordinate plane. Sometimes when you have a table like this, um, sometimes it's a ratio table, sometimes it's a rate table, and sometimes it can be a different table entirely, but we're going to talk about ratio tables today. Um, what you'll notice is that this can be a little bit difficult to interpret, not only because of that one little bit of glare, and I do apologize for that, but on Kaylee's scooter, this is the amount of time that has gone by, and this is the distance she's gone. So, after one second, she's gone three feet. After two seconds, she's gone six feet. After three seconds, she's gone nine feet. And after four seconds, she's gone 12 feet. And that's all okay, but sometimes it can be easier to put these points and to interpret them as ordered pairs and to put them on a coordinate grid or a coordinate plane. And what a coordinate plane is, is it's the place where two perpendicular lines, that's lines that meet at 90 degree angles, where two perpendicular lines meet at the zero points. And if you're having some trouble explaining what's going on, I'm not going to draw it this time. It's just going to appear. What you're going to notice about this coordinate plane is that there's a lot of things going on here. We have the x-axis, which goes just kidding. The x-axis, which goes across. We have the y-axis that goes up and down. And what we also have is we have the origin. And the origin is where the two axes meet. And the origin is always the ordered pair 0, 0. And what that 0, 0 means is that you don't run anywhere and you don't jump anywhere. Some students might remember that I like to think of coordinate pairs as, or ordered pairs, as directions for a video game. So you've got your character who always starts off at the origin, and then these directions are going to tell your character where to go. So all of these over here are actually, apparently that's off the grid, are actually ordered pairs. One, three, two, six, 3, 9, and 4, 12. And I like to think of ordered pairs as directions. They always say run, jump. So this first number is always the x coordinate. The second number is always the y coordinate. So my, for my first ordered pair, you see that run there. It says to start at the origin and you run one. So I'm going to run to one spot. And then my jump direction says that you jump three. So I'm going to jump three and that's where I'm going to put my first point. And that is point A. So we'll put a little A there. My second point, point B, says two, six. And what that means, I'm going to start back at the origin, because you always start back at the origin, and I'm going to run to, so I'm going to follow that x coordinate direction to go to, and then the y coordinate direction, or the jump, says 6. So I'm going to jump 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and that's going to be my point B. I'll continue doing that with the next point, point C. That's going to be run three, jump nine, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that will be point C. And then our last one, point D, is going to be four, twelve. So I'm going to run four, and I'm going, oh, sorry, one, two, three, four, and I'm going to jump twelve. And what you're going to notice right here is that we have a straight line forming between these points. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to draw a straight line and you're going to see why it's a bad idea to draw straight lines instead of using a ruler. It doesn't exactly cover each point because I went just a little bit crooked and that line's just a little bit off now. So what you need to be doing when you are drawing points is you need to be very careful to be using a ruler or the flat edge, edge of a piece of paper or the edge of a book or something to keep your line straight. <clears throat> Next, we're going to look at some scrapbooking. Gina can fit four pictures on one page of her scrapbooking book. 
So four pictures on page one, and page two, she'll have eight pictures total. On page three, she'll have 12 pictures, and on page four, she'll have 16 pictures total. That's how many total pictures she can fit in. Renee, on the other hand, has a scrapbook that fits six pictures a page. So when she gets down to page four, she'll have 24 pictures. What we're going to do is we're going to graph both of these up on the board so that we can see how these two compare. So if we take Gina and we take her page one and her four pictures, we're going to go right there. Well, we would have. We're going to go right there. Her next page on two, she'll have eight total pictures, so we're going to go up to eight. On page three, she'll have 12 pictures. And on page four, she'll have 16 pictures. That's what Gina looks like. And to show that, we're going to go ahead and connect these using an actual straight line so that you can see the difference. I'm going to connect this, start at point zero. We're going to go up. And we can actually continue this line now that we're doing a straight line. We can continue this and go through each point all the way up. And you can project how this is going to continue. Now, we're going to switch over to Renee's pictures. Renee has six pictures page. So on page one, she's going to have six pictures. On page two, she's going to have 12 pictures. On page three, she's going to have 18 pictures. And on page four, she's going to have 24 pictures. And what we're going to do is we're going to connect that next line, project it all the way up, and we can see how many more pictures she'll have. So on page six, we can see that Renee whoops, will be off the chart and Gina on page six will still have 24 pictures. Renee's going to have more, more than 30. And that's how using a coordinate grid can help you. I should probably get out of the way somehow. That's how using a coordinate grid can help you to see how everything is going to turn out.